something fun coming up that I wanted to get on people's radar. I'm going to try and and uh, be the positivity herald for a while here in Rallies and Resources, Rashawn and Tamarika. But Sundance is still happening. Sundance Film Festival is still happening January 28th to February 3rd. But no theaters now involved. Uh, how do you guys feel about that? Uh, it's, it's interesting, I guess. I mean, what, are they going to zoom everything? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I like, I, I like the idea of everybody being safe in the comforts of their home, but it is fun to go up to Sundance thinking you're going to run, rub shoulders with somebody famous. <laughs> I think it might be easier to rub shoulders in a zoom session to tell you the truth. Talk about a level playing field from the waist down, as Billy Palmer <laughs> likes to say, nobody knows what's going on. We don't want to know. But joining us to to shed some light on the festival, ticket sales open later this week. We have the Utah Managing Director and CFO, Betsy Wallace from Sundance. Hi, Betsy. Thanks for joining us. Hi, how are you? Doing well. You look great from the from the laptop up. <laughs> you know what? It's the new look. If everybody could look down, everybody be pajama bottoms or whatever right. else. But <laughs> It's been great last nine, 10 months. I got to tell you, you guys in a have, weird way just for that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. A lot, lot of pivoting happening and Sundance is no different. In fact, you've pivoted since announcing the festival in early December. You, you, There were going to be some in-person events. Now nothing is happening as far as I'm aware in person. Betsy, is that correct? Yeah, that is that is correct. You know, it's um, COVID has really been tough for companies in particular, something like Sundance Film Festival, where we all thrive off of being shoulder to shoulder, you know, right next to somebody in a theater and seeing a movie. But um, the reality is we're very focused as many, many other people and businesses are on the safety of our patrons and the safety of our residents here in Park City and Salt Lake and Utah. So we made the final decision um, just recently not to open the Ray. So in Utah, we do have uh, two partners that are helping us on other online presentations, Utah Film Center and Salt Lake City Film Society. But everything at this point in time is going to be online for us here in Utah. Well, I'm told you're still trying to make it special for Utahns. Yeah, we are. You know, it's interesting because um, I just love Utah. You know, I live here in Utah and uh, Utah has been such a fantastic partner for us, along with Park City, Park City Salt Lake City. Uh, Summit County, everyone. It's just been a um, remarkable embracing of, of Sundance and Sundance Film Festival. But the things happening for 2021 for Utah, I'm just going to hit a couple of them. One is we're going to have free Utah resident screenings of a feature film. It's called Life in a Day. It's going to be distributed free, discounted tickets. Well, there's really not discounted tickets because this is a free screening. So it's going to be offered to Utah colleges, universities, as well as organizations around um, around the state and residents. So we'll have a little bit better um, process to get those tickets in, in a couple of days. New this year, we're also expanding our high school uh, our access to high school students and teachers. And really, from the teacher perspective, it is um, accessing their portal, accessing them to be able to show films to their students and to have that dialogue within the school environment. So whether it's at home or in person, we wanted to make sure that we brought in films and, and it's just been a great way to get students closer to filmmakers and to, audience, um, to artists. And it's really, uh, over the years, it's been very live Q and A's when this has been happening and we expect the exact same thing on a more online kind of approach to high school students this year. And then the one last thing I just want to touch on is that for high school students, we're also going to provide the art of the short. And it's a collection of nine short films from this festival coming up. And they can access that and we'll provide all that detail soon uh, for shorts. And shorts are just a wonderful way of seeing film. You know, they're fantastic. They, um, they just really allow a lot of creativity in a very short period of time. So I hope people can experience all, you know, I, I, I will remark on what you just said earlier is we do open our public sales this Thursday, January 7th, and it starts at 12 uh, p.m. Mountain Time. Everything's in Mountain Time for us. And just go online to festival.sundance.org. But I will ask if you are interested in doing this, please make sure to register ahead of time. Get your account set up so when that, that starting point goes, you're not worrying about having to set up an account. 
then going on and buying products or, or um, getting a film. So try to get all that ahead of time and you probably will be have a little bit easier go of it on on Thursday. Well, I'm curious, That's how does Ryan? how does a screening sell out in a in a virtual festival? Because well, we're not all gathering at one time to screen it. Oh, that's such a great, great comment. You know, this is something I've just learned over the last year, which is on a digital aspect, the, it, well, let's, let's go back to in-person. In-person, you sell out because you only have so many seats, right? The theater yeah. can only take so many people. So it has that nature that's just built into it in, in person. Online, what you do have is you have audience caps that are set by the rights holders or the filmmakers that own those films. And they're basically saying only so many screens, people watching a, a movie online um, can be sold. And it's their their way of trying to control the value of their film. So okay. um, I can understand that, especially when you're coming to Sundance, we don't pre-sell films. So these are brand new, they're premieres. Mm. And the filmmakers want to make sure that there's value still attached to their films. So they put they do put caps on them and we have to live by them. Every film has a little bit different cap, so it's quite a Rubik's Cube trying to make sure we abide by those rules. So that's what um, is sort of out there as a limitation for us. Do but I have to watch bigger... it at the appointed date and time, or do I have a 24-hour window to hit the screening link? Love that one, too. So initially on the premieres, it is a set time. So you go online and you say, hey, here's my schedule. It's going to show at 8 p.m., I'm gonna reserve a ticket or get a ticket to get in line to that film. And once you have that ticket or reservation, you are set to jet. But it is at that point in time, 8 p.m. Uh, mountain. The online, after that premieres, everything then goes on to on demand. And at that point, you can watch it whenever you want. Yeah, run the stats for us because it was uh, mid-December that you posted the lineup. Yeah, so we have 72 feature films coming in. Um, and they start as premieres. And then as we just talked, once they come off premiere, they go on on demand and there's a set amount of time. So we start on uh, Thursday e evening with our opening night. We have our opening film, it's CODA, and then another series of films coming on right after that, that about three hours later. So it's five films that will premiere. Then we run through a cycle. Um, I think it's four times a day, or in some instances, five times a day of five films per time slot to um, see films and premieres. And once they stop um, a little bit later, about a day and a half or two days later, you can go on and start to watch on demand. Our awards uh, start on Tuesday night, sorry about that, Tuesday night. So if you're in a premiere and you're watching it on your way out of that virtual uh, screening, you'll be asked to vote on a film. You know, Did you like it? Did you not? Where were you? And on our awards night, we uh, announce our award winners. And on Wednesday is our award winner day. Well, plenty to be talking about uh, the issues, the topics, the folks involved in Sundance I always give so. us plenty to talk about. What's the website one more time, Betsy? It is festival.sundance.org. And what I love about this, you know, COVID has not been a friend to anybody and it's just been brutal. But this is a great way to spend time with your family, spend time you know, however you want to see it. And you're going to see awesome films, premieres, our artists, the independent voice. It is just a great way to embrace film and see them all at once and, and experience it in a way that, yeah, it's not the same as in person, but it's, I hopefully it's darn close to it. So please come. Thank you Enjoy. so much for giving us some time today. We've got more Sundance programming to come, but Betsy Wallace, we appreciate everything you just uh, shared with us. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Betsy Wallace, Utah Managing Director and CFO of Sundance and the 2021 festival coming up January 28th. You know what's interesting, folks? Y you get your whole car load in with your ticket. I I Betsy better not be listening, but it's not <laughs> no like... hide in the trunk. Huh? I don't we don't have to hide in the trunk anymore. <laughs> yeah, and they're not making you sign a pledge. Only one person shall watch the screen. If they were, I would just be like, yeah, yeah, I'll sign that. Yeah. But um, to connect us to the panel coming up, I wanted to to share something a film that uh, folks can anticipate. It's called My Own Landscapes. It's out of France. And here's a description. Before going to war, a former military game designer made video game scenarios that prepared soldiers for cultural shocks and healed trauma. And once back from the war, his relationship with his identity, his life, and with the video game changed. That's one in the nonfiction category to be looking for.